If you're using JavaScript, then you're gonna find arrays in nearly every single project that you build. Arrays are an essential part of JavaScript and understanding them better will make your life much easier as a developer. So in this video, I'm gonna focus on the filter method and some of its most basic use cases. And then I'm gonna give you a real life example of how it's used in a React.js project. So in this demonstration, I have an index.html file with just a link to the index.js file here. And inside of our index.js file, I have is just a simple array here by the name of people. And it just has some basic information such as name, age, and different jobs for each person here. So what the filter method does basically just re uh, returns a new temporary array. And it also, it leaves the old array intact and it's also chainable. So this is a way to, you can like filter out results. Say in this case, we want to return a new array which of people with just the name of John. So we don't, we want to exclude everybody else. So this is how we're going to do this. Basically, we're going to say, we're going to access our array by people. And we're going to say dot filter. And then inside here is where we're going to add in our function, right? So what we can say in this case, I'm going to give it a value by the name of person. And then in here, what I want to say is person dot name, we're, we're just accessing the value that we gave it here is equal to John. And what we want to do is just um, assign this to a constant here. So I'm going to say const and we'll just say my array, just like that. And then we'll console.log my array, just like so. And this will return, as you can see, an array of everybody by the name of John. So let's say, hey, we want, um, we want all the Johns that are developers and nobody else. So what we can also do, and this is why I said it is chainable, what we can also say here is, I'm gonna go ahead and just put this on a new line here. And it doesn't really matter, it works all the same. What we can say is filter, we'll do the same thing, person. And then in this case, I'll say person dot, dot job is equal to a developer. And you'll now see that lowered it to three. And now these are all the people in our array that have the name John that are also developers. So let's say that, hey, they're gonna go out to a bar, they need to be 21 and up, we can also, add in a third one, we'll say filter, say person, and then we can say person dot age, and we can say greater than or equal to 21, since we're in the US here. Now you can see it just returns everybody by the name of uh, John that is above the age of, 20, of 21 and also a developer. If we're in another country where the drinking age might be 18, let's say, you can see that our array now changes to three people. Now it's important to note that this original array is left untouched and I'll show you by the, if we just console.log people, you can see our original array is left untouched like so. And this is also chainable with another with also the uh, map method as well. So just to throw that out there. So now let's take a look at this in a real world React.js project. So this is a React.js project that I built. It is a cryptocurrency project that basically makes an API call to a cryptocurrency uh, service called CoinGecko. And then I, res um, I display all the information on the screen here. So if you wanna see how I built this project from start to finish, I'll put a link up in the corner above. But basically this is our coins uh, value here. And this would be the equivalent to our people array and the demonstration prior. And then what we're using is this filter. And basically what we're checking on this filter is this inside the search text here, the search box. Basically, if it's an empty string, we're just returning the entire coins value array that you see here. Else we're adding in some logic. And what we're doing is just converting this, um, whatever is entered here, whatever string is entered here, we're converting it to all lowercase. And then we're just filtering the response. So if we're searching for Bitcoin, I would type in B and you can already see that it's starting to filter out our values here. And we end up with Bitcoin just like that. So this is filtering in real time. And this is an example how you can use the filter method on a real life project. So hope you like this guys. I hope you got some value out of it. If you did smash the like button and I'll see you on the next one.